Good morning. Happy Tuesday to you. 601 here on BT. Stock markets in Asia have dropped for the fourth day in a row, with financial impacts being felt all over the world this morning. Overnight, China cut its interest rates for the fifth time in nine months after stocks lost roughly 8.5% yesterday. China's Shanghai index dropped another 7.6% today. The country's central bank has also increased the amount of money available for lending. Stocks across North America plummeted after being sparked by Monday's mass sell-off in China. The Canadian dollar dropped to an 11-year low against the U.S. dollar yesterday. Markets did show signs of recovery before heading into another tailspin. An expert from UBC says although investors are worried, the situation should steady itself soon. There's going to be some correction here, but I, I don't think it's... Uh... Um, I don't think it's an enduring sort of situation. I'm not trying to say there can't be some gala event later, which, but I'm just saying right now I'm not, I am not that worried personally. Other news this morning, the city of Maple Ridge wants to cut ties with the Salvation Army due to an ongoing problem with a growing homeless camp along Cliff Avenue. The city's mayor says the service, which is located near the camp, isn't working for Maple Ridge and a change may be needed. Council recently voted to ask BC Housing to end its contract with the Salvation Army Caring Place. It's been operating in this area for more than a decade. The camp turned up in May and in June it grew to more than 100 people. It's created a lot of hostility between between those who call this site home and people and businesses who operate and live in the area. People living near Jericho Beach Park are calling on the Vancouver Park Board to save wildlife in the area, saying many are in distress during this ongoing drought. The prolonged hot, dry weather is contributing to low water levels in nearby ponds. There have been reports of fish, bats, and other creatures in this area dying because of all of this. The earth is also so dry right now that water pumped into the area by the Vancouver Fire Department was quickly absorbed into the ground. For certain this year it's, it's a lot worse than normal because of the dry summer, uh, but as you can see, the animals are having a very, very hard time. Um, one of the mandates of uh, BC Parks and Recreation is to preserve our natural and representative ecosystems and it really is a shame that they aren't stepping up here to help these animals. Smoke from Washington State wildfires continue to cause visibility and air quality problems across the southern part of B.C., but that smoke is also helping to keep our province's own fires in check. Officials say the thick haze is acting like cloud cover and calming fires by absorbing some of the heat and keeping some of that humidity trapped. There are now about 180 fires burning across B.C., including a 45-square-kilometer blaze west of Rock Creek that claimed 30 homes earlier this month. That fire is now 75 percent contained. The province has already spent $233 million fighting more than 1,700 fires so far this year. In the U.S., the Stockpin fire in Okanagan County has become the largest on record in Washington State, scorching more than 1,000 square kilometers of land. Fire crews from B.C. and even as far away as New Zealand and Australia have arrived to join a ground campaign alongside U.S. soldiers. The fire is still burning and is about four kilometers south of the border. Well, most students head back to school exactly two weeks from today. As the final countdown continues for the remaining days of summer vacation, many kids encounter anxiety and stress about the new school year. Some common worries for children include difficult classes, making new friends, and meeting and adjusting to a new teacher. A psychiatrist with BC Children's Hospital recommends parents plan ahead to help ease the back-to-school transition. That could include introducing kids to the school year routine one to two weeks before before school starts, which would be right about now. What parents can do is offer a combination of understanding, practical support, and also their confidence that the children can be brave and face this new situation successfully. The decision to withdraw accreditation for a proposed law school in Langley is being discussed in B.C. Supreme Court this week. The B.C. Law Society pulled its approval for Trinity Western's law school, which is set to open next year. The provincial government has also withdrawn its support. Potential students would be sub subject to a community covenant, which would include agreeing that marriage is only between a man and a woman. Critics say that challenges equality rights. So we're arguing that um, because lawyers are essentially public agents and officers of the court, that any educational system that leads to you being a lawyer needs to be done in a, in a way that's free from discrimination. 
Trinity Western says their students' rights are being violated by not being accredited. Vancouver Central Library has been named one of the most beautiful in the world. It came in second place in a top 10 poll that was conducted by the BBC. The Coliseum-inspired building on West Georgia Street was built in the early 1990s, and it was the only library in Canada to make the list. A 17th century painting worth $2 million Canadian has been destroyed in Taiwan after a 12-year-old boy took a tumble. It was all caught on video. This poor guy, this is how it went down. An exhibition here in Taipei, the boy loses his balance and his fist ends up going through this $2 million painting entitled Flowers at the Face of Leonardo. The painting's bottom right, heavily damaged. The boy's family will not be charged for the painting. <laughs> There's something funny about that story that hasn't been mentioned yet, too. Is this is a museum with multi-million dollar works of art in it. And this